الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during these blessed 10 days to bless us, to forgive us, to guide us, and bless us to be better servants of His. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with a class with a bat. I know I talk about a lot of these same things over and over, and that's because they have great uh, meaning. And from amongst those themes that we like to discuss often, is the importance of uh, ikhlas, the importance of sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how sincerity goes such a long way. Being sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just being honest with yourself and sincere in trying to worship your Lord and please your Lord to Barak wa ta'ala. How can you not succeed? Well, one of the ways you cannot succeed of course, if you don't combine that with the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, but you just have to do your best. My point is you have to sincerely want guidance. And you have to sincerely do your best to practice and follow and understand the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And this sincerity is what is, uh, has, has been uh, commanded from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're, we're, we're sincere. Your Lord is commanded that you're sincere to Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kirim, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَى لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ اللَّهُ دِينَهُ نَفَاءَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kirim, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَى لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ And they were only commanded to worship Allah sincerity lahudin for him is the religion hunafa hunafa habitillah based on tawhid based on sincerity the religion of ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam the religion of all the prophets alayhim afdhu salatu wasalam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem he subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رُسُولٍ إِنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا تَعْقُودٍ And we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid ta'gud. And to avoid ta'gud. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know that all the prophets and messengers alayhim after the salatu wasalam were commanded to worship Allah alone. That's That's... That's what they were commanded with. And they were prohibited from and were told to stay away from and warn their um, umum from worshipping Taghut, meaning that which is falsely worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether that be the awliya, whether that be the saints, whether that be your shaykh, whether that be uh, Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam, or Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, or whoever or whatever, nothing is worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what we were commanded. And that's what the Prophet alayhim afdal salatu wasalam were commanded. In this ayah, habitifillah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولِ لِنَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ Which تَنِبُوا تَغُوا We sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and to uh, avoid false worship. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as with many ayat, Allah Azza wa Jal is giving what, what is known as both nafi wal ithbat. Nafi wal ithbat. What does this mean? A nafi habatifillah just means a negation. It means that there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is negating something. What is he negating in that ayat? He says, Wajtanibu tagu. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is negating, or he is making a nahi, a prohibition that it is impermissible for you to worship besides him, those ta'gut, anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot worship anything or anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And 
Ithbat refers to an affirmation, meaning Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has affirmed and ordered and commanded that the NBA, that all the prophets alayhim afdu salatu salam, they were sent with this messenger and it was in the imperative form that they must worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem which also shows that this is a common theme in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the affirmation, the tawheed and the negation of shirk. Qala subhanahu Worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with Him. So we see again, what does Allah give us in that ayah? What do we find linguistically? We find nafi with that. We see that Allah Azza wa Jal says, uh, Worship Allah alone and do not associate any partners with him. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed that you have to worship him and him alone. And he ordered that, and he commanded that. And anytime we find a command in the shara, the, the origin of that command is that it's an obligation and it's an act of ibadah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you to worship him and him alone, and he has prohibited you. He has prohibited you from worshiping anything besides him. But that means you have to have an understanding of what Tawheed is and what Shirk is. If you don't know those terms, then you need to go back to the basics of your religion. Your religion is built upon, again, what did we say in the beginning? We're talking about sincerity. We're talking about ikhlas lillah. We're talking about being sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is where we need to go back to. We need to go back to the sources of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and understand that that is that sincerity being sincere in your heart goes a long way because you're going to make mistakes you're going to make mistakes because we know that our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said kullu ibnu adam khatta wa khayna khata'in tawabun all the children of adam uh, make mistakes or commit sins and the best of those who sin are those who repent so, since that's the case, that we're ordered, uh, that, that we're going to make mistakes, we're going to have sins, we can come back to Allah, the best of us, because we all sin, the best of us who sin are those who come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what I wanted to share out of sincerity to my brothers and sisters, is the importance of sincerity. It's an important reminder that we remind each other, especially now we're in these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, you know, we want to uh, make our, our intention for Allah. We want to do our deeds that are accepted by Allah. If you want your deeds accepted by Allah, then make sure you have sincerity to Allah and make sure that what you're doing is in a conformity to what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered, did, uh, allowed, spoke about. And we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to bless us with ikhlas with that, with, with, with uh, sincerity to Him and with firmness upon the sunnah. And that's very important for us, Allah, to know, to understand this, and to actualize the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and begin being sincere in your heart. This goes a long way. A last uh, important thing I want to mention, Allah, especially for those brothers and sisters who live in Washington state, in the greater Seattle area. And this is really for all people, but I'm just directing it here since that's where we're from and we're here, is use your time wisely and also go out into the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship Him and Him alone and be sincere. You'll actually receive reward. For example, if you go out hiking and you just want to sightsee, you want to see the beauty out here, that's great. But if you go out hiking with the intent to reflect on the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His beautiful creation, with the intent to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by going out to strengthen your body so you can better worship Him with strength and with energy, to reflect on His signs, the ayat, koniya, 
meaning the signs in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, versus the ayat shari'a, which refers to uh, like the ayat, the, the, you know, the, the Quranic verses, then this will also be something you'll be rewarded with. If you come out, literally, you go out and you are going out to reflect on a lost creation, to do good deeds, then as the scholars mention, there's a, a principle we want to be aware of. And it has to do with the class as well as, as what we've been talking about. And that is, al wasail laha ahkam al maqasid that the means to something receives the reward of its end. So for example, if you come out, for example, a car, you get in your car, that's now a wasila. Your car, normally a car has no reward for it, using a car. If you use a car, you use the bus, you walk, there's no edger associated with it. There's no edger and there's no sin. But if you then, then turn around and use that same car to go to the masjid, to go to a lecture, Islamic lecture, to do good, righteous deeds with the intent to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it then becomes something that you're going to be rewarded with. You're going to be rewarded by Allah Azza wa Jal for that. So strive your best to make your intent to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshiping Him and Him alone. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. May Allah bless us all with ikhlas, with the battle of sunnah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.